Hey guys, Ryan here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about have you ever struggled with doubt about your faith? And uh, this is going to come from a short little article that uh, just appeared actually yesterday in our Devo Blast newsletter as a ministry. Uh, if you want that email newsletter, you can find it at focusingonthemarkministries.com and you can find it under the About tab. There's a newsletter button. Um, but again, that's at our website. You can find that uh, in the links on the page in the About section. But I want to talk about this doubt. Have you ever doubted your faith? Have you ever doubted maybe what I believe isn't true? I think everybody, if we're honest, we've been there at some point. But there's an encouraging thing. Christianity, Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches us that we don't have to doubt. We can know with certainty about what we have believed. And so I want to probe into maybe a few reasons why we struggle with doubt, and I want to encourage you with some scriptures. So let me read this. Luke 1, 4 tells us that the Gospel of Luke was written that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. You can be certain about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can be certain about what Scripture teaches. It tells us in 1 Timothy 3.9 that one of the requirements for deacons, listen to this, they must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. In other words, they have to believe the faith. They can't be doubting. Now, we have probably all doubted at one point in our lives. We've probably been attacked. Well, there's three things I want to talk about. Three reasons why I think that we doubt. One, I know from my own experience, doubt is more likely to come as a form of temptation when I have not been in the Bible like I'm supposed to be. When you're not in the Word of God, when you're not reading and studying His Word on a consistent basis, it's a lot easier to doubt because you're not staying fed with the living bread of Christ. The second reason why is that many times doubt comes specifically in areas that we've not studied the Bible on. We hear people talking, we hear a conversation, and we, we don't really understand, we don't really know anything about this topic. We're like, well, I don't really know what the Bible says about that. And that can cause us to doubt. And lastly, and I think this is probably the biggest reason why many of us doubt and struggle with doubt, because most doubt is based, get this, on philosophy and reasonable arguments. I have never really found any doubt rising up within me or within anybody else I know when the Bible is being studied verse by verse. On the contrary, I found that when the Word of God is being discussed and taught and preached verse by verse, that faith builds. Romans chapter 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We hear God's Word, the living Word of God. It is living and active. It cuts us to the heart, Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 4.12. That happens when we're walking through Scripture. But you know, doubt usually comes when I'm talking with people or when I've seen people talking with somebody else. I've seen it both ways. I've experienced it myself and I've seen others experience it. Most doubt happens because somebody that seems super smart starts throwing this philosophy and that philosophy at you and this argument and that argument and it sounds real good and it goes back to the first part you haven't been in the word so you don't know how to respond to it Paul warned Timothy and the Colossians to be on guard against hollow and deceptive philosophies You've got to be careful those philosophies and those reasonable arguments honestly they contradict scripture I've studied many different things that different religions throw at Christianity and say that's what Christianity teaches and it teaches this, that, and that. It doesn't teach what they're saying it teaches when you actually dig in verse by verse. Same thing with philosophy and same thing with agnostics and atheists. They know how to pull out one little verse or one little phrase, but if they really study the Bible verse by verse, those doubts vanish. 
Let me read you something the Apostle John said. He said, they went out from us. And he's talking about Antichrist. He's talking about people that are anti-gospel message. They went out from us. Okay, they left the church. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. What John's talking about here, and this is still true today. Many of the most vicious opponents of Christianity and many of the most vicious people that want to attack your faith as a Christian and make you doubt were once in the church themselves. You know, you'll see this with Charles Darwin. He grew up in a Christian home. You'll see this with many others that have been the largest secularists in all of history, the, the biggest influence in all of history. Those secularists, many of them, grew up in a Christian home. They rejected the faith. Now the Bible tells us right here in 1 John 2.19, they were never Christians, but they left so that it would be plain that they truly were not of us. But they are many times the most vicious antichrists because they know just enough of Scripture to attack your faith. And really all they're doing is they're doing what Satan does. They're attempting and they're attacking and they're trying to undermine God's Word. So we need to be on guard on that. How do we respond though? How do we respond to these false teachers? How do we respond to the presence of doubt? I've been in ministry now probably about eight years. And I've seen in all of that time many people, I mean many people I was in church with that have walked away from everything. They never really believed. They now claim to be atheist or agnostic or spiritual. How are we to respond to those things? My heart is broken and grieved for them. Grieved that they continue to doubt, but I know why they doubt. No, I don't know everything in their heart, but I know a major reason from talking with them. They've never really studied the Bible. They've never really dug into God's Word verse by verse. They may have been in church their whole life. They may have had some great experiences where they had an emotional high and they thought that that was God working in their life. Now, God can work in our souls. He can work in our emotions. We can feel His presence, but that is not the marker of being a Christian. Having an experience is not what Christianity is all about. It is about being forgiven for your sins because you believe in Jesus Christ. And Christianity is not a unreasonable faith. It is not a blind trust. Christianity has evidence behind what happens. Now, yeah, we believe in a supernatural Savior, but there is more evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ and for the infallible, inerrant preservation of the Word of God than anything else in history. I challenge you to go study that if you're struggling with doubt there. Dig in. Know with certainty, as Luke wrote Theophilus in the first part of his Gospel, know with certainty concerning the things that you have believed. You don't just need to go to church and believe what the preacher tells you. You need to test what is being said by the Scriptures. In the book of Acts, Paul commended the Bereans when he went to minister among them that they tested everything he said by the Scriptures. They dug into the Bible and they found out that what he was saying, was it true? May we have that diligence. So let me read you how Paul tells us to respond. 2 Timothy 2. 4, 3 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 3 through 5. The time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine. This is what I'm seeing the more I talk with people. They do not endure sound doctrine. This means sound teaching. They do not endure actually digging into the Bible and looking at what it says. No, they want to talk about philosophy and oh, I feel this and I believe this about God. Christianity is not something you can pick and choose what you want to believe. The basis of what we believe as Christians comes from the Bible. And when we dig in the Bible, then we can know with certainty about what is true. But there is no standard. There is no foundation and bedrock of truth if we don't dig into Scripture. So it tells us, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. 
They're going to go after teachers that itch their ears and say what they want to hear. They want to hear a health and wealth gospel that, well, let's see, I believe in God and He's going to give me money and perfect health and all this stuff. They want to believe that, they're going to find somebody to preach it. They want to believe that, well, I don't really have to think much about my sin or I don't really have to think too much about Jesus dying for my sin. They can go find teachers that will teach what their itching ears want to hear. Having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves. Accumulate. Big word there. It means there's going to be a lot. They're going to keep adding on. This isn't just a few. They're going to accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And then get this. And will turn away from listening to the truth. They will turn away from listening to the truth. If you're struggling with doubt, ask yourself this question. Have you turned away from listening to sound doctrine? Have you accumulated people around you, teachers, preachers, books? Have you accumulated people that tell you what you want to hear? Have you turned off your ears from listening to the truth because it confronts you and it convicts you? Or are you open and humble? Is your heart pliable to the Lord convicting you and transforming you by His Word? And get this, and wander off in the midst. Not only have they turned their ears off, not only have they accumulated teachers, but they have wandered off in the midst. It is a sad thing when I've seen people within churches that get caught up in things that are completely unscriptural. They dive into the beginning of the Bible and they start going into myths saying, well, it had to be evolution. And it had, the, the day had to represent millions and billions of years because science tells us this. No, we can believe scripture based on what it says. God created the world in six literal days. They wander off in the myths about these things. They wander off in the myths saying, well, there were these aliens that came here and, and they put people here and these aliens are really demons and they created the world and God didn't. These are foolish myths and you're only getting into them. And it is such a sad thing to see. But I have seen it and I've had conversations with people. I have had people come up to me after I have preached and start pulling out these things saying, well, what do you know about this? What do you know about that? What about this lost book of the Bible? And I'll tell them, hey, it's not the Bible. It was not in the 66 books of our Bible. You are wandering off into these things, and when you get into these things, you are wandering away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is Christ crucified on the cross of Calvary for our sins, that we could have forgiveness. They will wander off in the myths. But here's the encouragement. As for us, as for you, always be sober-minded. That means be level-headed. Be serious-minded about the gospel. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. We got to continue sharing the gospel. We have to remain steadfast. We have to remain level headed. And yes, it can be hard sometimes. We have to endure suffering. We have to be patient and gentle. But we still have to contend for the truth, the gospel delivered once to the saints. So, do you struggle with doubt? The scripture is clear that we can know with certainty about the things that we have been taught. Dig in. And I want to leave you with this. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. That means dig into the word. So that you will be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly handling the word of truth. So that you can know the Bible and be able to share it with others. Again, if you want to see this and see other updates from our uh, FMM ministry, from uh, Nathan and Noah and uh, Kenneth and myself, you can go on our website, focusingonthemarkministries.com. Underneath the About tab, you can sign up for the newsletter, which is Devo Blast, um, and you'll find a newsletter underneath our About tab. I hope this is an encouragement to you. Comment, let us know. Ask us questions here. What are some doubts that you've been struggling with? And... How has digging into the Word of God helped eliminate those doubts from your mind? God bless you, my friends, and I pray that on this Lord's Day that you worship the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit, with your heart, and in truth, according to the Word of God. God bless my friends.